Welcome everyone to the Really 007 podcast. I'm Tom Pickup and we're here for this exclusive interview with Guts Otto. As you can see, he's with us now. Good evening, Guts. Good evening. <laughs> and of course, uh, Guts is famous for playing Herr Richard Stamper in one of our favourite Bond films, Tomorrow Never Dies. Now, you can watch all our interviews on our YouTube channel, including uh, interviews with many actors and people behind the camera of the James Bond films. You can also listen to our episodes on iTunes and Spotify. Please subscribe and leave a lovely review if, if you would. That would be great. Thank you. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, and you can find daily interaction between Bond fans all over the world, including the EU. Good. Yes. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great that you mentioned that because it's, yeah. um, I feel invited now. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> we, we try not to get political on this show, but uh, just saying you're welcome. So. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so today with me, I have a regular contributor, John Kell, who's, uh, who's sat down there. Hello. And we also have uh, a special guest who's been with us on many occasions now. We've got David here, also known as Licensed to Queer. Hi, uh, folks. Um, great to be here. I'm, I'm just warning you in advance. I get very, very kind of, um, you know, I, you know, I can talk for England, but I get very starstruck. Very. Um, so, yeah, that's where I am at the moment. I'm sure I'll warm up in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen David at a loss for words before. So I know. Quite I mean, you know, ten and a half hours of Diamonds Are Forever review, and I, I, I I'm struggling with words right now. <laughs> God damn it! We have to do something there. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Gertz, of course, has has been acting for over thirty years, I believe, and he's played a huge variety of parts on stage and screen, including Downfall, The Pillars of the Earth, and Iron Sky. But we, as we say, of course, know him best for the brooding henchman, Herr Stamper. In tomorrow never dies so you know by the way that's a good <laughs> Abend. you know my character originally wasn't german at all oh, oh right. no not at all this is um because um the uh, bruce fierstein um who uh, who wrote the script to tomorrow never dies stayed at the landmark hotel in london when he was working on the script and the manager the of the hotel uh, was called richard stamper and he oh. was from south africa so Stemper is not a German name at all. So they created mine. My, my character was named after the, um, the manager of the hotel, of the Landmark Hotel, and was originally, even in the script, it was, uh, I, I was South African. And, um, uh, but uh, Jonathan Price came up with the idea some of, since I'm failing all the time, he said so much for German efficiency. <laughs> and he brought that back. He brought, oh. he made this character actually German, which, um, which was fun. You know what's really strange? Like, we were just joking just before you arrived, dead on time, that we were, John was almost hoping you'd, you'd arrive a bit late so we could try out that line on you. We could say just. <laughs> okay, so well, hold on a second. I'll, go ahead. Go on, John. You get. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting. I'm you, getting stage fright now. Listen to me now, but I can't listen to uh, you anymore. So uh, try whatever you want to do. I'll I'll be Elliot Carver then. So much for German efficiency. <laughs> there we go. John. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stamper, will you please kill those? Anyway, this is a family friendly podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, David's warmed uh, up. Yeah. But I was uh, there on the nose, uh, eight o'clock my time. So, so much for German efficiency, guys. So much for German <laughs> yes. yes, Mr. Stumper. Brilliant. Yeah, so I suppose we start just by asking you a few questions about your beginning. So how, how did you sort of get into acting as a young man? How did I get into acting? Yeah. Um, I... Uh, I was in the German national rowing team when I was young, and um, in the uh, in, in Germany we had the you either had to join the army or the social service. You had to go; it was uh, mandatory at the time. Now, now it's it's not anymore. Um, but I didn't want to me playing Richard Stemper. I didn't want to have a gun. I don't, didn't want to shoot people or something like that. It was, I was very peaceful. Still am. So I didn't want to do that. And um, 
and uh, I had a knee injury due to my uh, rowing thing, and uh, I fled to Berlin because Berlin uh, was um, the German authorities uh, were not allowed to write letters or enter or do anything uh, in uh, Berlin because it was under the status of the four uh, victorious uh, members of World War II. So, um, so I, I went to Berlin and and I thought, well, now I have uh, I have gained I don't know it was I think it was eighteen months at the time, uh, I have uh, gained eighteen months and I uh, well what shall I do with that and I, uh, I never had anything to do, anything to do with with acting, um, but I um, I found a book about a, a drama school in Germany. I thought, well, that sounds great. This is something I could do with the, with those eighteen months because it's like teaching yourself how to speak how to walk how to communicate how to argue lots of things that might help you in your in your uh, upcoming life so um i tried to attend for a german drama school what i didn't know at the time was that um you have uh, around a thousand uh people who are trying to get one of 10 places in those kind of schools um, so I, I, I did that uh, in a couple schools, actually nine drama schools in Germany. And during that time, I, uh, I realized this could be a fantastic job. This could be my job. This is what, uh, how I want to make a living. And I ended up in Munich uh, drama school. And um, ever since, um, I can feed me and my family with that fantastic job. I always say it's the greatest and the best job in the world if I have one. <laughs> wow so what were your first kind of roles did you, did you start on the stage um my first uh actually one of my first roles well, this is not i'm not i'm telling the truth here was in in schindler's list oh yeah um yeah. i was i was still in drama school and i was very often i was in vienna and uh, i came home that was still that was pre-cell phone time obviously and i came home to my um to my flat and my roommate say, said uh, told me that somebody from Vienna called and I thought well hmm, somebody from Vienna called hmm, must have been from my former times I don't know and I didn't answer the phone for about oh didn't the phone call they didn't call him back for about a week or 10 days or so and then I thought well maybe why not I should give him a call because his name was Fleischhacker which is meat hacker yeah yeah <laughs> are you calling Mr. Meat Hacker in Vienna goes, oh, okay, why not? Let's call Mr. Meat Hacker. And I call Mr. Meat Hacker and he says, uh, where'd you get that phone, phone number from? I said, well, I, you called me. No, no, I haven't called you. Where'd you get that phone number from? No, excuse me, you called me. I came back to my flat and my new said, No, you, and we were arguing. And I said, listen, what's it all about? And he said, it's about Steven Spielberg. And I went, oh, it's about <laughs> fuck Steven Spielberg. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> and yeah, um, then, yeah. Uh, uh, no, and then, uh, and unfor unfortunately, the part why he called me, and it, I, it's up until now, I don't know why he called me. Um, but um, because at the time I didn't do any, I mean, I was still in drama school, you know, um, and it was not a big part, but it was Schindler's List, God damn it. And um, um, so the part why he called me originally. Uh, was gone but two weeks later he called me again and then I was uh, in Krakow for I don't know three four weeks and came home and I was literally on body generated drugs for at least half a year it was fantastic it was just great being part of that film and, and having experienced so many things and um, yeah so this is how it all began good start yeah <laughs> well i mean what what was it like seeing all these incredible actors and obviously steven spielberg and just did you know at the time this is going to be a massive classic film that's going to win oscars and everything um well the thing is um i was um i expected it to be because i thought um spielberg is more like a storyteller he's telling but at the time he did things like jaws or what else um uh, um, 
he was uh, making e. Jurassic Park at the same time, it, wasn't he? Which is, but, uh, he which is did. Bad. He, he yeah. was actually uh, he was cutting it via satellite at the time, which is strange. This is why I did um, some of the um, voices of the raptors. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, really. <laughs> I, yeah. Oh wow! I didn't know what? that. <laughs> I, I, I'm incredibly gullible, oh. so I'm completely taken in. If that's if that's if you're having a song. Um, <laughs> but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh my word <laughs> oh, anyway so um <laughs> so i expected him to be a, a storyteller but in in I mean, he was amazing with the actors really 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 amazing for example my first day i i came in and it was actually he, he just wanted to check my costume and at, i didn't have it well that was pre-internet so you couldn't check what is uh, Steven Spielberg looking like? And we'll, 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 you know, it's like it's not like today, yeah. you know. So I came to the set, and I thought there was a guy with a with long white hair, and I thought, well, that that must be him. He looks very special. That's Steven Spielberg, but it was the props guy, anyway. So and, and <laughs> he was <laughs> he was looking at my costume, um, and was asking me, "Can you shoot?" I said. Oh, well, sure, I can shoot. I haven't, uh, as I told you, I didn't have a gun in my hand before at all before. So, but if the director asks you, "Can you do something?" You go, "Yeah, sure, I can do everything." You know, this is what <laughs> actors are like. So, and there's this scene where um, where uh, Ray Fiennes is uh, is trying to find out who stole the chicken, and he starts to shoot. Um, he was lining up ten people. And he starts to shoot all everybody, and 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 I was so freaking fucking nervous, and I was totally wired everything, and I had to follow in, follow him, and 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 ask in German, tell you come and uh, who stole the chicken, and put pressure on the people, and then he sh he's shooting the first person, and um and I was so freaking nervous, but I was all wired up, wired up, and everything. So and and then and my. Uh, and they wanted me to um, to shoot the the dead body on the floor. So it's like boom. And um, after I mean, he all, already fell down and go and, and give him the last uh, the last shot. So I was nervous, and every normal director would go like, "Hey, come on, it's just a film, you know. Or you have that, you know, trying to calm you down, which wouldn't work because I was I was a I don't know, very young and obviously very nervous, but I was full, fully wired and would have taken too, too long to convince me to be less nervous. So what he said was, um, listen, this is a dummy down there and there's an explosion. As soon as you shoot, there will be an explosion and I don't want you to uh, get hurt. So put a hand in front of, in front of your face uh, as soon as you shoot. Um, and plus, don't worry. I'm the camera is only on um, on your gun on, on your on the hand. I, I don't see your face. You go there and shoot him. And what happens? It's in the film. <laughs> I do this because I'm protecting me with my hand, and it looks so professional in a way. But he said, I thought I would do something, you know, he tricked me. He, did you see that? Yeah. 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 So he, yeah. Tricked, he tricked me and it was a, and it was a, 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 there were a couple of those situations where um, he got to um, a certain point where he wanted to end up with the story or with the situation, or with the scene. Um, without telling everything you know he, he tried to he always found ways how to uh in a way manipulate people uh the actors i'm not, nowadays i'm not quite sure if i really like it at the time i thought wow that's just amazing mm. i can tell you more stories like that but we're here oh seven wise so uh, <laughs> 
I've I've heard similar stories for when he obviously he always gets really great performances out of child actors. So mm-hmm. like Close Encounters, I think they told the uh, the 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 ch- is it Barry the child character in that that he mm-hmm. would um, that essentially the aliens were going in the scene, but he basically told Barry that this was the last day of the film, and that's how he kind of got him to be upset and that sort of thing. So it's interesting. I've never heard I've heard lots of stories of about Spielberg uh, getting performances that way out of children, but. I've never heard one from mm. from an adult. How oh, old were was... you when you How old were you when you did Schindler's List? It was very. I was about this tall. <laughs> you were that. You were that. <laughs> I was. Yes. I. No, I was not yet fully grown. Still growing. Yeah. I was uh, drama school, so 22, 23. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's a, that's incredible. Wow. I, I mean, one of the things is being German. You, you you obviously got more chance of being cast in all these so many war films, aren't there? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, you've been uh, in a few, I, haven't you? I was wearing that <laughs> uniform quite quite often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you still are. <laughs> you, well, you've done. Obviously, we mentioned downfalls, uh, downfall, and there's Goebbels and Gedulgig. That's another one. Yeah. 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 And well, and, and, and Iron Sky is, uh, yeah, well, it's, not, yeah, yeah. It's a Nazi oh. kind of thing. Uh, Goebbels und Geduldig, hold on a second. Uh, a couple, even German films. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, well, and I mean, and, and at the end of the day, I mean, this, uh, uh, this historical fact uh, brings German actors mm. into the parts of, bad guys, evil villains, all that, because mm. the international, um, not only um, uh, film and movie society, I mean, everybody has this in the back of his, head, of, his, of his head, Germans are mean, Germans are bad. I mean, it's very hard for us to play the good guys and the, and the lovers and the sympathetic people. It's more, it's more the evil guys, the, mm. the efficient yeah. killers. Do you think that has played, um, do you think that's ever been a positive for you? I mean, the story goes um, that you in you walked into the audition and said, I'm big, I'm bad, and I'm German. I, I, to what extent is that actually, so that is definitely true. What is true is uh, I came back from a German film where I played a, a soldier and I had, I mean, my hair was about, I was all, almost bald headed so when barbara asked me um she asked me you have 20 seconds to introduce yourself what can i say excuse me (laughs) no i can say i'm I'm big i'm bad i'm bold this is what i said i'm german five seconds keep the rest and i was um actually amazed that this came out of my mouth i mean that was really like what and she smiled, I smiled, and that was my first casting. It was the first casting. Oh, I mean, that's so, is that, so you think so you were so young, you were just, you had so much confidence, and you thought, I'm just going to... Well, I was down. fucking nervous, let me tell you. The All problem right, okay. was, yeah, I was freaking nervous, because well, at first I met Roger Spottiswood. Debbie introduced me to Roger, and, and he was asking me, so what did you do? I'm professionally i said i did a lot of theater in germany so no 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 i'm talking about what did you do professionally I said, yeah i did a lot of theater in germany what i mean he wanted to squeeze any film you know big movies mm-hmm. or whatever out of, out of me and uh, I, I hadn't i mean i haven't done at the time uh anything remarkable so that was my first meeting so i was like fuck I, this is not going this is not going well and um and then I see Barbara, uh, not very much older than I am at the, I mean, still is. I mean, and she was gorgeous and she was behind that desk and she had long leather boots, long black leather boots. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Sorry. right. laughs> Here we and, go. And, I was, and, and she was on the phone and said, like, okay, this is the producer. Okay, this is the producer. Fuck, this is the producer. Come on, you're kidding. No, she is the producer. Okay, good, good. And she was on the phone and she said, hold on a second. I have a very good looking German guy here. So, oh. <laughs> very good looking German guy. <laughs> Things are going better now, guys. And uh, and then she <laughs> she covered the phone. And she's like, look, you have 20 seconds. So, and this... <gasps> And this came out. Oh, oh. 
And then you must have heard when you heard you were cast. Was that amazing? Amazing feel. Um, I, I did. I couldn't believe it actually, because um, like uh, lot, not long ago, before that happened, there was a um, there was a uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger film that was meant to be shot by um, Verhoeven was called The Crusader, I think, and uh, and I. I had and and I had I was in contact, contact with the with production that went through the German DOP, who was the DOP of Das Boot, um, and um, so I, things were looking good. And it would on the on Friday the thirteenth of April they cancelled the entire project, and then I thought, mm. well, now I'm here in London, and as soon as I'm not in front of the camera, I don't believe a thing. And um, so I mm. went through the entire procedure, I went to London, I met um, peers, I met everybody, but, uh, and my, uh, my suits were tailored at Oswald Boateng and everything was perfect. And then first day of shooting, they bring me in six o'clock at night because we were shooting in that uh, shopping mall, I think Brendan, Brent, whatever uh, it is. Brent called. Cross. Brent, Brent Cross, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Grand Cross, and they brought me in six o'clock, and we had to leave by four at night because then they, the the normal um, thing would um, the normal traffic would come container. back exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I came in I came at six o'clock at night, and first night I left four o'clock without doing anything. Second night the same thing happened, and on Sunday we had to leave by by midnight. 11 o'clock, I was called on set. And I saw um, Terry Hatcher slapping Pierce's face. That was that scene. I was like, whoo. <laughs> and the funny thing, I mean, now I'm, <laughs> nobody's watching. Is anybody watching? No, I can't tell those stories. Can't yeah, I? Can, yeah. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> we'll go out of those, though. Yeah, no. Because um, I don't know why she did that, but. Uh, I came in when they were still rehearsing and she was slapping his face in the rehearsals. She went like, Bratch! <laughs> I thought, like, wow. And he didn't say, he didn't twinkle, he didn't say a word. He took it as James fucking Bond. It was amazing. We were doing it again, more camera moving over here. Bratch! Another one. Duke. And he came back and said, oh, I was fucking impressed. That was my first uh, day on set. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. What, what was it like to work with Pierce? Because we're, we're massive Pierce Brosnan fans. And, yeah, and to be honest, that, that story is just making us love him even more. So no, what he was is, it like to is, work with him? He is great. He is really, I, 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 I love him. He's a fantastic human being, uh, apart from the fact that he's a great actor. But he is a very... I had so much fun with Piers and we were partying and we had we're actually sharing uh, very sad moments as well because I was uh, um, uh, one of the best friends of, of Debbie, uh, of, of Barbara Broccoli um, was Dodi Alfayette. And, mm. um, and uh, when, and I met Dodi like, three weeks or something like that, because he was the co-producer on G.I. Jane, um, which I'm, I, did you know that he was a producer? I, I didn't know at the time. Anyways, we were, I didn't know he was uh, on mainstream releases like that. That's incredible. And, um, and uh, he asked me um, and, uh, and a couple others to have a private screening of G.I. Uh, G.I. Jane, it was, you know, not G.I. Joe, G.I. Jane, with uh, Demi Moore. And so I, uh, I, I, this is where I met him. And um, and on that Saturday night where that happened in Paris, I was um, I was uh, out with uh, with Pierce and we just left the uh, the club and got into into the car when we heard that Diana was uh, was killed. I'm not quite sure if we, if, if at least we heard that there is this accident and she was meant to come on set on Monday. 
together with the kids. Oh. So, and then we heard that Ooh. that um, that uh, Dodi died and she died and everything. So that was really that was really weird shooting that film um, in that situation. And also, mm. um, you probably all remember when when the the funeral day and all that. It was so weird. It was so crazy. Mm. It was really so. And we were somehow involved a bit more than than just the, the normal uh, regular, per, uh, uh, regular person. And um, and this is, uh, I mean, this is uh, also something that is uh, bonding uh, yeah. people together when they share those mm -hmm. kind, of, uh, kind of experiences. And, yeah. Wow. Tomorrow, Tomorrow Never Dies is my favorite of the Pierce Brosnan films. And I know, you know, a lot of people prefer golden eye world is not enough and that kind of thing but to me it's really interesting what you just said that it had that sort of dynamic behind the scenes because hmm. I, I i think it really does show everyone kind of at the top of their game really and i think probably i mean yeah that must have been a quite a difficult atmosphere to work working in some ways and i know it was famously a really fast shoot i think and they were kind of rewriting things as it went um how 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 did how did shooting Tomorrow Never Dies feel to you compared to your other film experiences? Well, it's very hard to compare because um, this is obviously one of the biggest shows I've ever worked on. But it was, um, especially at the time when I was not so experienced, but um, it was literally like that. We we were driving to the lot and Bruce Fierstein was sitting in the tent writing the scene for the day. My script is about this and had like, huge and has I don't know all the colors of the world it is so colorful because we have like the yellow draft and the blah blah whatever um and it came to the point where they just wanted to finish the film and I I I had to go go see um Michael Wilson and Barbara and and tell them that I think that they're losing my character because my character is it is has to be mean he has to be brutal he has to be evil the, the more the the, e, the more evil i am um the, the better and 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 stronger is james bond and um so i had to fight for my character and uh well and and they were listening that was also great i was wow. um it was um and and plus i mean there were writing on the go so they had the possibility to change things now i'm not quite sure if that ever happened before or after with that you normally you have a script and yeah there are some changes slightly changes whatever whatever but i mean it was everything was uh it was more almost like improvising in a way mm. I think your character is actually one of the really well-developed henchmen i know if you like read the novelizations and things um that your character has even more so there's the thing about the pain which is kind of a bit more developed in the next uh pierce brosnan film but i you like your shirt that. by the way yeah uh, well yeah <laughs> yeah it reminds <laughs> me on the shirt i was That's wearing the yes. God I, was, I, was, to be honest, I was i was like two I, I literally got in from work about an hour and a half ago and i was just like what am i gonna wear what am i gonna wear and then i and i remembered i remembered that instagram post where i i basically held up a um uh, a whisk mm -hmm. as like a chakra torture implement and that was the first thing and you commented on it so it made <laughs> It, it emboldened me to um and bless you bless you for commenting on this lunatic wearing a, wearing a stripy t-shirt i mean yes <laughs> no it's i love it oh, okay oh. I, I was actually going to ask i was going to kind of kind of two things really you know did you work out any additional backstory for yourself in your head about this character because mm -hmm. i think he's really well written in the film but also well, I, i'm interested in the clothing as well because yeah, yeah. you said that everything was sort of tailored for you when you got there but he's yeah, got such yeah. a distinctive look i wondered if you had any influence on that um first of all when when i when i first read the script and i it, as i said it changed a lot and then i realized i'm standing around in the background a lot staring and I thought, well, I have to do something here. I have to, I mean, it, it's uh, people staring. It's like, it's like the taste, it's a tapestry in the background. It's like, uh, no. Um, so, um, 
I asked the director to give me um, two different colors of eyes. And um, this is how the black eye came. It's a, the, the, because it's a, it makes the look, the, the staring more intense, or more like, what the, like, like disturbing in a way. And, and I think that, and not a lot of people realize that it's, I mean, if you watch the film, it's not, you, you don't go like, oh, come on, he has two different colors of eyes. No, you don't do that. It's like, maybe it's irritating, but it's not so obvious. And um, yeah, and the, and the suits, um, they were all made by, by Oswald Boateng, a lovely suit. I still have them. They gave them to me uh, and I'm still wearing them. Uh, yeah. uh, and that still fit yeah <laughs> <laughs> 25 fucking years later yeah well done. um and um and no that was uh, uh i think the costume designer she did a, fan, a fantastic job and we uh and it's not easy to and a couple of things like um all the um the cargo pants and all that. We did like literally walking, shopping in London. You know, it's like not, we're walking around and to uh, find clothes that fit me is, it's not that easy. Um, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. They're not that many tall people in London, <laughs> apart from the Scandinavians. Yeah, very, very. Can I ask a bit? Can I ask you a bit about the character development? Because when I was thinking about it, I think one of the great things about Stamper is that whilst he is uh, obviously a badass, he, there's there's an emotional connection he has with, with other characters yeah. as well. So like we think of, say, Dr. Kaufman, he's like a father to me. And, and, I, and I remember that scene uh, at the end where, um, you know, you're battering Bond and you're shouting out the names of, Kaufman and yeah. Carver it's like that, that revenge as you're going for it yeah and I was just I mean I mean I'm just explaining that but give us an insight into the into that emotional background and the character development with him that'd be amazing well it's way easier to have to have a reason to do bad and mean things it's it's way easier to kill somebody if you have a reason if you're just like oh well hold on a second I'm the villain I have to kill you sorry uh, it's like uh, <laughs> It's uh, it's way easier if you have a, I mean, I would say uh, almost everybody has an emotional background. I mean, the the, the biggest asshole has an emo emotional background, you, and very rarely you you see that. And um, I was really, um, I, I don't know if that came from uh, originally came from Bruce Fierstein, or if if that was written or if that was developed later, but. Um, I think it's always better to have a reason to do things as an I actor, think... as a, as a character, as a, yeah. He's mm. such a classic Fleming character, really, because he's both say, he's a, sad, a sadist and a masochist. He seems to kind of get off on having the life twisted in him and, you know, whatever he's going to do for 52 hours with the implements with bits of Bond's body. <laughs> Um, what was your sort of what was your sort of affinity? Did you have much kind of connection to Bond before before uh, taking? Oh yeah, uh, when I was a kid, I was uh, I was run over by a car and I ended up in hospital. And and my neighbor in the hospital, he had um, at the time it, I think it was better. You know the the better cams or the, the was it video two thousand? I'm not quite sure. The the they were the like huge, and he had a video. Um, uh, player in the uh, in in the hospital, and I watched at least in the hospital at the time, crazy uh, at least ten or fifteen Bond films because he was a real Bond uh, buff. He he loved it, and then he had them all. So and and for me as a German actor, especially at the time, now that changed a bit. Um, uh, I thought, well, if you want to work internationally, this is the only window you can get uh, out of Germany. Well, because how can, I mean, normally nobody's interested, German film does not travel. I mean, nobody's interested in German film, even though some people speak German, but... Uh, <laughs> Not, but not, not that me. many. Yeah. I have to put the subtitles on. Sorry, I studied French. Sorry. <laughs> See. See what? 
no that's uh, and i thought well this is a this is a good this is probably the only possibility for a german actor to work internationally is is go via bond wow this is uh, pretty early i realized that and and uh, i'm not quite sure if i even was in the acting business when i thought that when i had that thought you, like you say, we've we mentioned some of the German roles, but Downfall is massive. You know, in in England, it's so well known. Mm. So, some particularly for those memes, of, I'm sure you've seen. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> all the all the spoofs and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fagerlein, yeah. Fagerlein. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Was it was it through the German industry connections that you got involved in Cloud Atlas, which is oh, one of my all time favorite movies? I have no idea why that movie got critically maligned. Yeah. OK, well, probably I'm not quite sure if that that it probably went through Germany. Yeah. And uh, it's very sad because I had two other parts in the film that had been um, edited out. Um, oh, because man. so many characters, so many yeah. uh, actors had um more than one part and it yeah. came back and everything mm -hmm. um but um yeah that was uh that was strange i it's um, i ha i watched that film quite often and plus who i had the possibility to read the script but it was <laughs> very i i'm i'm probably too i i'm still i'm probably too german and too structured to understand what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> there was a there was a German co-director, wasn't it? I was yeah. I was mangling yeah, his yeah. name. Sorry, so Tom Tickver, is that oh, right? Tom Tickver, yeah, Tom yeah. Tickver. No, oh, I love his films. And you've played Richard the Third recently. Haven't yeah, you? just yeah, uh, so... yesterday was my last performance. Oh, oh really? Oh, this for this year. Richard, I'm a Shakespeare addict um one of shake he's like one of shakespeare's greatest villains and i've seen that play so many times but he's not usually go watch I, our version it's fantastic i really i only see I, if i could travel to germany you know i would i would definitely even if it was in german i you know i'd, I'd just sit there for three hours and love it probably but you know I, i'm having trouble kind of square i have read a few of the german reviews that have described your your performance as richard the third as seductive and I'm just like, I can't square that with what I think of when I think of Richard III. So yeah, it's, yeah, you yeah. know, you know, is that what you were going for? A seductive, seductive. Richard III? One of, one of Shakespeare's greatest monsters? Uh, well, um, no, the thing is, um, a couple of years ago, I, uh, I did Don Quixote in Hamburg, um, oh. a direct, uh, a directed former assistant of Peter Brook, Michael Bogdanov. Or Michael Bogdanov. Have you never heard that name before? It rings a bell. Oh, anyway, so anyways, he he was he was from Wales, and what he wanted to do with with uh, Don Quixote was um, play it the old-fashioned uh, Shakespearean way. Um, um, actors company comes to the theater to the square yeah. in the and is just performing in front of everybody and now we're telling you we're uh, we're, we're playing this here and and uh that was his idea stick and cloth theater no huge i mean just very simple things and after a while um the the character of don quixote um uh, overcomes, overwhelms the the actor who actually thinks, which is like a double twist, that mm -hmm. he's Don Quixote. That was his idea, and unfortunately, I think it didn't it didn't really fully work. But um, now we're doing the same, and here it works perfectly, perfectly, mm -hmm. because the first part of the um, of, of of the play. It's very funny because we're it's it's like the troop the the troop of of actors coming into town and we're only three people we're, we're playing that this with three people and the other two are wow. playing all the other parts I play Richard and it's very funny it's really everybody's laughing we're having a blast you hoo hoo and after a while that Richard character takes over my actor character and this is where the drama starts and that's and the end. I kill my fellow actors. Oh wow! And uh, I'm I'm alone on stage. So I think it um, it's uh, and you know it's like I, I 
played 250 times uh, King's Speech, right. and after a while, you, you, you're starting to stutter, and you don't want to go, and you think, oh, I don't want to play it 260 times. This is it now. I've done. I Every time I have to go to play Richard, I love it. I really, I'm, I'm looking forward. It's, it's fantastic. It's a great play. Really? Incredible. Wow. Going back to the screen, you've, you've obviously then worked with the, the Wachowskis, and I believe you've done a film called Emperor with Lee Tamahori, who mm -hmm. died of the day. So what, what were they like? I haven't worked with both Wachowskis. I only worked with... Uh, what, what is, what's Lana, it? I think. Lana, exactly, Lana, which was funny. She, she is very... She has a lot of positive energy and is really... Um, she's great. And Lee is, is, is a bit more difficult. What, what, is, what is really a shame that nobody, nobody will probably ever see that film, mm -hmm. um, Emperor, um, yeah, yeah. which was uh, with uh, Adrian Brody and a couple other good actors. But unfortunately, the, the di director is, uh, I think he's still, uh, no, the, not the director, the producer is still in, uh, in prison for tax fraud, 250 million or something like that. So this project will sit in the shelf forever um even though i was killing rutger hauer <laughs> oh wow <laughs> <laughs> and nobody will ever see that oh what a shame. Oh. shame you've i was looking at some of the other bond actors you've you've been a, been a, in the same films as an actor alongside obviously you mentioned ray fines but christoph Voltz, i believe and yeah, Christoph. Yeah, yeah. Ola, Ola a pass from Skyfall. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our, one of John's favourites, Anatole Taubman from Quantum, Elvis from our Quantum as well. So you've uh, <laughs> had you've had uh, de dealings with many uh, many a box. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's called the family. Yeah. Oh. Is there a sense of the the Bond family? You know. Oh yeah, I think I. I you you hear that quite often, but I it's um uh for, for ex yeah I I I feel like that especially since I told you about the the the, the special um, mm. situation at the time, but I still have con contact with lots of them. I mean, I, I still have contact with Michelle, with Pierce, with uh, Barbara, um, yeah, and. Um, uh, and for example, like two years ago, last year, two years ago, I was in Toronto and I saw uh, Daniel Craig and I walked up to him and then he said, I'm, I'm Mr. Stemper from, and yeah, yeah, hello, how are you doing? So it's like, it, it is a family kind of thing. Brilliant. Oh, that's so good that's to hear. Isn't it? it's, it's like re the reputation that the franchise has for sort of looking after and looking out mm. for fellow actors and, and producers and people behind the scenes. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So Roger Spottiswood, just tell us a bit more about him. What what kind of style does he have as a director? I think he was uh, he was under a lot of pressure because the mm. studio had to release that film yeah. for um, for Christmas, and um, he didn't he, he and this is why they hadn't time to prep uh, properly. This is why they had to rewrite and everything. It was so, and he was under that enormous pressure. And um, so it, I didn't have that much contact with him because he was under mm. um, under that that pressure bubble, and um, yeah. So th this is a bit sad, but um, um, yeah, I don't, I can't tell you mm. um, that many stories about Roger. But despite the uh, under pressure, I mean, you've got to be so proud of the final product because, I mean, Tomorrow Never Dies is, is probably the most action heavy out of every single one of the James Bond films, I'd say. I mean, the set pieces are absolutely superb in that film. Well, when you're shooting that, you don't feel that, that it's, you know, being in, 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 in Roger's position, he, um, he had to handle all that. And for example, when these... And things went wrong every once in a while. For example, we had a huge explosion in in the in the stealth boat, and we had to evacuate the stage and woo, all that. And and uh, as a as an actor, you go like, oh, 
something's going to happen. It's a freaking Bond film. You come back and uh, you do it tomorrow, day after tomorrow. They will bring you back yeah. and, and this will see uh, definitely the silver screen. That's for sure. But as a director, it, this is a totally different cup of tea. You go like, oh, fuck. And it, what if it, they don't like it? What if, uh, you know, they, they will always blame me. They will never bl blame the actors. They will never blame the, 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 the writer. They will never, they will blame the director. Mm. So just yeah. going back to what you um, said about B Barbara Broccoli and the uh, casting before you said your immortal audition line. Um, she said there's an attractive German uh, I I here uh, for the role. And um, yeah, I've actually just lost my question. The basically, I want to know. <laughs> I, I wanna know. I'm, I'm, get, I'm going shy again because um, basically there is a section of the Twitter and Instagram community who find Richard Stamper play by yourself quite attractive um and, and without making this too cringeworthy i'm going to hold my hand up and say i can i am part of that group uh, so uh, what's it like being uh, really hot in a bond film is the question i was trying to, wow. I, was, I, was, I was trying to dress it up but i failed miserably sorry well the thing is uh, I, can, I just can't answer that. Like, <laughs> what can I say? No, it's uh, it was great for me. It was fantastic, uh, mm. and and you know what? Um, it took a while actually for me to realize that um, that it, it it's a stigma. That's for sure. You are the James Bond villain, and I thought, you know, mm -hmm. guys, I'm not a James Bond villain. I'm an actor. I played in more than hundred films. Sit since you know like i'm an actor but still if you if, if for richard the third on stage you get bond villain guts otto is playing richard the third yeah. you yeah. go like oh mm. come on guys that's ridiculous yeah that was 25 years ago yeah but um it took me a while but now i mm. think come on it's fantastic i mean what the people have have something to write at least otherwise they would just write guts otto it doesn't well who knows i mean strange name but James uh, Gertz Otto, James Bond villain. Wow, you have a you have a picture, and um, so I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah, brilliant. I embrace so it. Good. That is good to hear. Yeah, I, there's there's pros and cons, aren't there? I suppose with all these things being a Bond film. Um, Otherwise, I wouldn't talk to you guys. But I was going to say yes. Yeah, apologies. Oh, we, well, we appreciate it so much. Yeah, and, and and there's such a massive Bond community that you know just love you. <laughs> you know, and and um, we just think you're great. So yeah. thank you for coming. I, I, on. I, 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 I try to convince Barbara. I said, Barbara, you know what? Because uh, you know, <laughs> Debbie called me once and said, Do you know a um, a really strong um menacing it can be slightly older but no, and it, uh, um they were looking for what's his um ah, the former wrestler um the rock batista batista exactly oh, yeah, batista yeah, yeah. yeah so they were casting that part and she called me and said and i called barbara I said barbara Genetic engineering can bring me back. It would be fantastic. <laughs> yes. <if Stamper>. yes. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> well, but then, she, but then she said, "No, ah, oh guys, that won't work. <laughs> it's, it's too well. It, it's uh, it's too memorable." And uh, I was I was sad, but well, it's it's a good explanation why why I can't be in there again uh, because I'm too memorable. That's. Uh, yeah I, I accept that i accept that so if 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 you're blown up that's it you can't come back uh, if you know what i'm oh, Tom. Gonna, uh, well you, now, now it's up to the it's up to the fan base to do something guys uh, well, well don't worry got so straight after this we are starting a twitter storm of bring back stamper you know, yes. got to a, yeah and I, t I, I, I mean want. it would be the start i mean genetic engineering come on i mean that's uh that it's part of i mean it's could be perfect in Bond. I mean, could yeah, fit yeah. perfectly. Yeah. Got the campaign. <laughs> yeah. You, you mentioned on. obviously the actors who you in, alongside the film. Michelle Yeoh is is so popular amongst Bond fans mm. for being a great Bond girl, and you always come back to her. You know, whenever the films come out, it's like mm -hmm. oh, there's a character, a female character, as strong as her. So, what what was she like as a as a 
an actor and as a, as a woman. She still is, by the way. She is, uh, she's a lady, that's for sure. She is really a lady. She was a dancer before she became an actress. And she's suffering a lot with her back. Even, like a lot of dancers have uh, problems with their body. So um, she was uh, also during the filming uh, um, suffering, but she took it with such a grace. And so such a trooper. She is fantastic. And um, yeah, and uh, we had great times together, I must say, also with her... Um, um, with her uh, personal assistant, um, Philip Hemnell. Um, Philip and I, we <laughs> also had a lot of fun, um, not only on stage, but also afterwards. And uh, another strange story I can tell you, because after a while, because they put me up in the Landmark Hotel um, in a suite, and I was there for a dinner. I think four months or something like that. Um, and I thought, hotel guys, everybody is living in an apartment. Let me, uh, an apartment would be just fantastic. You, you save some money. And, and for me, I have more privacy because it, you're not shooting all the, all the time and, and living in a hotel where you room service, it gets <laughs> to your fucking nerves. You don't want to, and, and you want to hang something and you want to like feel at home, but you can't. So, um, and what they did was, uh, they didn't rent out an apartment an apartment they rented out the apartment of Jacqueline Bisset oh uh in South Kensington just opposite of the Michelin building with a 80 square meter rooftop terrace it was fucking great <laughs> well done <laughs> and we were celebrating so many parties in that in that apartment and uh one day Michelle left but um, um Philip stayed and it was Sunday morning and we were standing, uh, we were totally naked in a way and uh, switching on the television. And, and suddenly it is Casino Royale, the, the, the original one. And it has Jacqueline Bisset in it. Yeah. And in she's looking yeah. straight into the camera. And Philip and I go, oh, she's looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> she knows that we're in her apartment. God damn it. <laughs> switched off the phone. It's like, oh, fuck. Uh, it's crazy. Oh, so there, there were good parties and was, was Pierce a good, a good lad in a night out? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> You don't have to say anything. You know? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you you are in so much of the film. Yes. Um, that you because sometimes you get the feeling when you hear when you read interviews or listen to interviews with Bond actors, they almost feel a bit cheated that they don't get to go to the locations. Yeah. You know, it's all on Pinewood. You know, whatever. But you must have gone to most of those countries because mm. you're on the boat in Thailand. And I was. Mean, I had one yeah. shooting day in Thailand, and I was yeah. there for about two weeks at least, which was fantastic because I rented a, um, a scooter and I drove along. and And the, 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 actually, the production allowed me to do that, which was also great. Nowadays, they wouldn't do that anymore. I had like a vacation, um, and uh, actually, was it more than one day? Must have been. Oh, there was another funny story because um, when we. Uh, drove to one of the i mean we always had um a a yacht a very modern yacht um that would bring us to the location and um it was i mean pierce was on on the yacht and and michelle and every we were all on that thing and they drove us to the location and it had a gps tracking system and a sonar system which was at the time fairly new mm. and um and but unfortunately the uh the, the captain wasn't i don't know what he did but he was uh he how do you call, how, how do you call that he ran the boat on sand how, how did you say that on the ground yeah he ran the ground on sand so he didn't there was no leak or anything but he couldn't move anymore so or the the yacht couldn't could, couldn't move anymore so he, he the, the captain himself he 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 um 
uh, he jumped into the water trying to setting free the boat and everything. And, and we were all like, what the fuck is going on? What's he doing down there? And, like, eh. and, and then he's da- coming up, um, the captain, and he was looking at Pierce and he said, oh, please don't kill me, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me, Mr. Bond. I did a, I did a mistake. Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, uh, you can imagine. I had some fun on that on that shoot. And what of course but, Hamburg is features prominently. So that you know, coming from Germany, was it was it you, you wanted to go a bit further afield than Hamburg? <laughs> yeah, well, mm, uh for me it was great because i had my my crew party in hamburg so i rented a um pretty not a club more like uh a music cafe and i rented it out and then we had and i invited the entire crew to come there and party because i thought well this is home ground home turf uh come let's have a party and it was another great party <laughs> Amazing. oh my god yes i did work as well guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, picture of michael g wilson dancing there just, yeah. <laughs> obviously yeah. barbara as well yeah. barbara yeah and and Ellswit. my god oh right <laughs> oh really robert was he the direct is he the director of photography so yeah yeah oh wow <laughs> what, what about Jonathan Price? I love yes. Jonathan Price to pieces. Yeah. You must have spent quite a lot of time with him. Yeah, sure. I, um, we uh, went out having uh, dinner quite often. And uh, what can I tell about that? Because uh, this is getting private here. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Thespian, I'm sure he was on his best behavior during the yeah, no, 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 absolutely, absolutely. No, no, it's uh, uh <laughs> I, I really mean that. It's like it was great. No, he's uh, he's a um, fantastic Thespian. Well, I was just I was just adding on the back because although David is right that you are in so so much of the film, there's one deleted scene that I have always been devastated has never been included in the film, and that's when you actually stamp on someone's head. <laughs> So, uh, because now you've, you've answered the question already, because I was going to ask about, is that the origin of the name Stamper? But you've obviously shown like that it wasn't because of, it was more because of um, named after the place. But, I, well, I just suppose I'm asking, would it have been even better to have had that aspect of your character where it actually stamps on people's head? <laughs> Yeah, well, there, there is the first sequence where you, where you see my character, and this is when uh, we sunk uh, the the um, the HMS Devonshire. Devonshire, exactly. And we're coming with the stealth boat, and I have uh, the machine gun, and I shoot them. And we shot that actually. And this is this is really this is even more set than it's not in the film than stamping on someone's head, okay. because. It was not the first sequence I shot, but um, at the time, my character was already um, established as being German. And there is a very famous uh, German lullaby uh, that goes, Alle meine Entchen schwimmen auf dem See, schwimmen auf dem See, Köpfchen in das Wasser, Schwänzchen in die Höhe, which is all the little ducklings are swimming on the lake, they're putting their heads into, into the water and their tail goes up. And I, I thought, it, and we filmed it, it would be fantastic. Oh. Oh. Richard Stemper would shoot all those poor soul, uh, sailors and go like, alle meine Entchen, poor ducklings are swimming on the lake, swimming on the lake. Down goes their head, and oh my comes the tail. Oh, that, I, and I'm oh. sad about that one. That is so I bomb mean, as well. How we, we shot it? It's brilliant. I mean, as it is, that sequence is in, just incredibly violent for a bomb film. I know you don't see any of the bullets hit, but I think it's your expression 
Um, and when, when you say later on, I am told the footage is excellent. You can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can thoroughly, you don't, you don't need to see it. It's just, yeah. and I think is that, I mean, obviously you've got a gigantic machine gun, but you are like grinning the entire time. It's, it is. Like, yeah, at least the grinning state, uh, because yeah. I, I, I want on I wanted to have, um, uh, I wanted to show a, a, somebody who is really, who enjoys what mm. he's doing. My word. Mm. Yeah. But I, I think one of the differences between lots of it, because there are other, you know, big blonde henchmen in Bond. I mean, if you go back to Red Grant in From mm -hmm. Russia with Love, you know, that's that's the first one. But, and then you, you've got the ones who really don't say a lot or anything, like the one in You Only Live Twice. But I always get the feeling that Stamper is actually quite clever as well. He's he's actually really witty. I love the line, um, what is it? Drop it, Mr. Bond, or I drop your friend. Um, mm -hmm. when, when you when you've got Wei Wei Lin on there. So was that something you were conscious of? You didn't just want him to be like a a mute kind of physical presence. Well, I was really happy that I had the the the, the opportunity to be some to bring a bit more into that. That probably has also to do with the fact that we were con continuously writing the the, the mm. scenes because mm. as i said in the beginning he was standing around a, a lot and uh and um yeah and and he was more like trying to protect carver all the time didn't yeah. attack bond you know, and and that somehow turned he he became more like um a an, an, an individual threat to Bond than uh, than it was before, and I'm really um, glad that it turned out that way. You do a lot of the stunts yourself mm -hmm. as well, because there's loads of action scenes you're in. Not yeah, I had a, I had a very good double stunt double those, but I tried to do it as much as possible. Um, uh, stupid me. <laughs> I still have a scar here from Piers, by the way. Oh right! Is because he the, stabbed uh, me, fucking. And... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> just grin, just keep smiling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For cover, you know. It's payback time. <laughs> it's such a good fight, though, and we haven't had that many end fights in the in the Bond films recently. So I always love a good battle with the henchmen and Bond. Yeah. So. It's great. Yeah, and I, you know what, and, and I'm the last to survive. Well, not I, yeah. but Stemper. Yeah. Um, mm. Normally, it's the 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 bad guy who is, or the main villain who is the last one mm. still standing. Because you obviously, yeah. like Jonathan Price is is more the sort of businessman. He's not a physical threat. So Stamper is so key to being the physical threat for Bond, and mm. he's the one who you think, heck, Bond's got to beat him to complete the mission. So I love that. Yeah. Last uh, last question I've sort of got about appearance. The, the you said you went in bald for the audition. Whose idea was the bleached blonde oh, hair? Not mine. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> not mine for sure. Why? Um, <laughs> well, uh, come on. I mean, if somebody's offering you a part in the James Bond film. You mm. do whatever they want you to do, and yeah, it, yeah. You, you're chopping off your arm, you know. Um, and the bleach blonde, I knew that it would be an, a, a lot of time, a, a, a lot of stress for the hair, blah, 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 blah. It's, um, but uh, looking back now, it's, uh, it's, well, it's just an. It's an icon it, itself, you so know. So distinctive. It's so yeah. distinctive, and um, yeah. and unfortunately, I had a couple. For example, I had a French director who wanted une brosse blonde, comme dans le bon film. And you know, I did that. It's been there, done the. You know, yeah. I'm yeah. not going back there. And, uh, yeah. and um, but he wanted that, and oh, that was uh, oh, a huge struggle. Um, but uh, and also, it it helps for me. Or it helped at the time for me to, um, you know, with the eye and the blonde hair and that fantastic suit and everything, you are already a character. You don't have to like you. You, you just has to. You just have to fill that. You know. Yeah. It it helped me a lot um, uh, to 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 handle and work with that character because the 
um, the superficial or the, the 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 look itself was so strong, and I, I loved it. I still love it. I think it's great. Yes, and it, it means that when you do other films as well, you're not instantly, oh look, that's the guy from Tomorrow Never Dies, because you, you're yourself. Yeah, yeah, there, it's you, you can uh, easier um, dive into different parts, different characters, because you know that's yeah. it's so outstanding, so. so I, it's me, but um, I've, I've, I'm happy that, that I didn't have to wear a w weird, um, I don't know, uh, makeup or whatever like that. It's still my face, but um, yeah, it's very, uh, I'm happy that it turned out like that. Can you just ask, what, what, was, it, what was it like at Pinewood? Because the sets are just incredible. Was I mean, assuming a lot of that was on sets, like the, the interiors of the stealth ship and all that sort of stuff. Um, what was a bit weird that um, we shot at the same time as the League of Gentlemen. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So Sean Connery was there as well. Wow. In, uh, on on the on the lot uh, next to ours. That was a bit weird. I mean, not for me, but I yeah. think for Pierce it was strange, and for um, some of the production people it was weird because they worked with him. I mean, it's like, for, and um, mm. and and I met him once in the Momos. I'm not quite sure if that still exists, the oh, yeah. restaurant. Um, and wow, he had a fantastic aura. He was really, I, I was flabbergasted, really, like ooh, sitting there. Great, great guy. Fantastic. Wow. Proper movie star, isn't he? Yeah. I, oh, absolutely. Who, who would you say your favourite James Bond is of all the actors, all six of them? That's easy. There's one I know best. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Make us... <laughs> And yeah. I mean, I uh, and now, I mean, now even James Bond knows how to die on a, uh, not on a cruise missile, but be killed with the rocket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if Bond can come Payback back, payback time, guys. Stamper can surely come back. I think. I yeah. owe you an unpleasant death, Mister Bond. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dare I say your your death was more emotional than uh, Jim Bond? <laughs> oh <laughs> God! <laughs> Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> I take you've seen it then, Gertz. You've seen the new film. <laughs> no, I saw it. Yeah, just ruined it for you. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah, this is why I say that with the with the with the missile. Yeah, right? yeah, you yeah. Got hit by a missile. Do you, do you prefer the? Do you, do you like the sort of more serious Bond? Because it, it's quite different to Tomorrow Never Dies in a way, isn't it? The sort of it's more of a oh, fun, yeah. fun action film. It's uh, you're asking the private person here, and and me personally, I think it was. It was a great start with Casino Royale when they somehow reinvented the yeah. the, the the character and 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 brought it to a, somewhere else because you had all those other uh, secret agents, all the um, uh, what's his name again, um, Burn. Uh, anyways, you know all the other uh, friend, even franchise some every every once in a while, yeah. but. Um, so they they needed to do something, and I when I when I saw the first one, when I saw um, uh, uh, Casino Royale, I was really I, I was convinced that that could work. But now I think, well, I, it's not witty anymore. It's not funny anymore. It's mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it, and sometimes I don't understand. I don't get the story. God damn it! I think sometimes the story is. Is a bit lame, <laughs> and you go. What, hold on a second. What are they doing with that? What is that with the water somewhere? Okay, well, and what is this, this, this bass in there? This blubbering, and what are they doing? And you're falling inside. You're dead. But hold on a second. But it should be something with um, that is in your body, not outside your body. What are you? So many question marks I have, and so many questions I'm asking myself sometimes, and. Um, and I would accept that if it would be more funny. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in 20 years' time, people yeah. will go, oh, yeah, that wasn't so far-fetched. I mean, there are people, and I, d I d generally don't get on with these people, 
who say that Tomorrow Never Dies is a far-fetched story about starting a war for ratings, but I've been defending it since 1997. You know what? One thing is that is really that is really sad because if you look at um, uh, and modern telecommunication or modern mm. communication in general, what we didn't have in Tomorrow Never Dies, and it was there already, um, is the internet. Yeah. Mm. It would have been just amazing. What uh, what a look into the future would have that been yeah. if if it wouldn't have been the the classical media uh, uh, print and all that. If somebody would have mentioned something like the internet and how you can manipulate people with the internet, I mean, because the the, the media man manipulation, I mean, is is in there, but it's yeah. not now. What's what what's happening now is is way more effective, way yeah. more brutal, way more. Uh, so it's that's really that's really sad that we didn't have it in the film. It's, it's when Carver says, uh, "I want us on the air twenty four hours a day," and you look at it now and you go, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. This yeah. is our moment." Because <laughs> oh. he's rewriting the headlines, isn't he? Which is yeah. Uh, Speaking to the internet, isn't it? Yeah, but brilliant. We've really loved having you here. It's yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I owe you an unpleasant death, Mr. Bond. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic guts. Thank you. Okay, so, you're thank welcome. Thank you so much. And thanks for sparing us your time. And uh, yeah, thank you. Can't, can't wait to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can't wait to watch Tomorrow Never Dies again, basically. Now. Oh, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I, yesterday I watched um, what, a film that I haven't seen at all because it was so bad. A French <laughs> film called Gunblast Vodka, a film I shot in Poland like two or three films after, and it was so horrible. And it was such a horrible experience to watch that film. Sometimes it's really no fun to watch old films. Yeah. You, it's, it's really... Oh. Sometimes it is. So um, have fun watching tomorrow. Oh, we will do. We will do. Yeah. Well, Take care. Sure it was it was great fun uh, talking to you. You, you too. Yeah, you Thank you, guys. Okay. Take care. Bye Take bye. Care. bye. Take bye. care. Bye bye.